Why cannot I move? Why cannot I move? Why this one cannot move? <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. It's just the arrow. Oh. So, uh, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the February edition of Geography Colloquium. This month's event is also an ABC, um, ABCD GIS event, so we're combining the two for this month. Uh, I'm Jeff Blossom with the Center for Geographic Analysis, and I'm very happy to introduce uh, Dr. Sinyu Ye. Um, he's, he's with us at the CGA as a, bit of, as a visiting scholar, and he comes from um, Kent State University, where Dr. Ye is the founding director of the Computational Social Scientist, uh, Social Science Laboratory there. And so with that, I will turn it over to you. Okay, thank you everyone to come into my talk. Uh, my uh, top topic is about social media analytics for natural disaster management. Uh, in my talk, I will go through some uh, frame, framework design idea and uh, how, uh, use a case study to show how it is implement, uh, the implementation. Under a big umbrella of sustainable communities, I do this research. Why? So I, I try to very quickly introduce myself. I was an urban and regional planner before I came to US. After I came, I took a degree in economic geography, look at the public, pub, public policy issues in China. And later, I find out the data, the spatial pattern, uh, temporal trends of geographical phenomena really caught my attention. So I turned to be a geographical information scientist and a spatial economization. After I became faculty, I found out the best way to get money is to collaborate. So I collaborate a lot with social and environmental scientists and computational scientists. In the past six years, and the COPI, I have secured about $4 million grants from National Science Foundation, uh, Department of Commerce, and the Department of Energy. Okay, so if we look back, uh, the, the theories which really inspire me to do this kind of work is a uh, uh, trend. Uh, in about 50 years ago, uh, the Hopkins doctoral dissertation was translated in, in, into English, published by University of Chicago. It's called the Innovation Diffusion as a Spatial Process. And for that one, the famous argument is farmers are more likely to adopt innovation if they are close, proximate to, to early adopters. It really reminds me us a lot of how we understand the social media, the information diffusion in the social media. Because in Huxian's argument, he mentioned both spatial network and the social network, and how the two networks interact with each other. And in the 1970s, the paper, What About People in Regional Science, he further pointed out it's, a, it's a very dangerous to understand the society based on the aggregate level data. So, so the detail level data is very much needed. Let's see, I think it's probably easier. If you go here, and then just click. Next time, click that. OK. So, so only like some years ago, uh, Science published a, a paper called Life in the Network, the Coming Age of Computational Social Science. We also see our Gary King name here as a co-author. So in this paper, in, published in 2009, very inspiring, talking about the, how the big data 
make it possible for us to understand, to transform our understanding of the lives, organizations, and societies, which cannot be, uh, cannot get done just a few years ago. So in other words, how clear this idea very much realized in the context, context of growing big data and new data sources. And last year, along with two other scholars, uh, Dr. Xiao and Dr. Zhou, we added a very, uh, very successful uh, special issue in the International Journal of Geographic Information Science, uh, talking about the human dynamics in the mobile and the big data area. Especially, we are talking about how the detail level human environment interaction become possible within the advances in location aware technology, information and communication technology and the mobile technology. So in other words, what, as a hot trend asked, what are people in regional science then with the power of the green individual level data, we are also be able to answer the question is what, what are people in human environment interaction across skills so the detailed data of individual activities and interactions can help us to un understand some or ask some research questions which cannot be thinkable just some uh, some years ago. So we will also be able to model the interaction between physical and the virtual uh, spaces. I have three uh, ongoing MSF grants. Uh, due to time limitation and uh, the topic relevance, I will only pick up the, high, the, the, the highlighted one about the social temporal modeling of human dynamics across social media and social networks, which was funded, is being funded by National Science Foundation among three universities, uh, San Diego State University, University, University of Arkansas, and the Kansas State University. And I'm the uh, PI on the uh, Kent State side. The whole team is led by uh, Ming at uh, San Diego State University. So for the rest of two grounds is about the flow of transportation. Uh, while the three has, can be funded um, almost the similar time period is we use some idea of network. Network and flow which will also follow a lot from the thoughts of action. So, so uh, coming to today's topic, we will talk, talk about the natural disaster. So why do the natural disaster management? First, using the new data sets or the individual level data, we will be able to see what are people in the human environment interaction and the emergency response. For the social media in natural disaster management, basically it have uh, two reasons to do that. First, from the especially from the emergency response department, they want to broadcast the situational uh, announcements, allow people on the ground to know what's going on. On the other side, the uh, people on the ground can get some. Uh, the real time information and the send back. So it's a one, it's a two way information interaction. For the importance of the social media in natural disaster management, we will see first event detection. Uh, for example, if there's a wildfire uh, went out, and for those people who are the first time who witness the wildfire, they can report the, there's a wildfire. And, and we can also really can very rapidly assess the disaster damage so the corresponding agencies can send out some resource as soon as possible to put a limited resource on demand. And also the people's situational awareness help uh, the reduce uh, loss of property and the possible uh, death. When we look at the data itself, social media data itself, we would argue there are the two dimensions we need to consider them uh, 
simultaneously, which four dimensions, the first dimension is about space. For example, what are space in social media uh, message? Social media messages has a delete that the space was talking about, they have latitude or longitude. Or they have the, some about a city name. It's also is about space. Regarding time, a social media message come with a high resolution timestamp. Uh, have the exact time when a message was uh, posted. Regarding the content, uh, social media messages, the content vary from texts to images. Uh, tweets, tweet itself is mainly for text message, while Instagram is mainly for images and photos. A fourth in, uh, important dimension is about the network component in the social media. Because in the tweets especially, it will have the retweet, reply, mention, and friends, followers. This kind of information recorded by social media can be used to formulate a social network. This is some argument we are talking about how many questions we can ask if we, we consider the four uh, dimensions. The first, the top, the upper left is if we consider them like uh, individually. So you definitely you can only analyze the space, only analyze the time or analyze uh, content or network. So you can always analyze them separately. Separately, The upper right it means you pick up any two dimensions, analyze them simultaneously. And the bottom left is pick up any three components and analyze them simultaneously. The bottom right definitely is how can see the all the dimension together. I will give you examples. The why we need to do that? If we did a kind of the literature review, look at how many people are using these dimensions, four dimensions. Find out the majority of them using like uh, the content. Uh, and over 50% of the literature is uh, about the content analysis of social media. Why? Most of these papers are, were published by uh, linguists and uh, computer scientists. And then definitely the second largest share is uh, by space, a geographer. If we further look at that, is only 25% of them using some simultaneous analysis is consider multiple dimension together. Uh, others, like uh, the more percentages on the separate dimension analysis, all they have some kind of composite. Is a composite is run one dimension first, then flow into the other dimension. So, so Okay. So So the uh, given the example, if I only ask space in the first uh, tweets, what kind of question I can ask? I can ask is the hot spot. Like uh, that's that's very frequently used in many analyses to the uh, chemical density to get the hot spot of tweets. And we can definitely look at it by time to see when disaster related social media activities reach peak in the process of, of a disaster. For the regarding content and how many social media feeds report the power outage in a disaster. So it's regarding content. Or regarding network, how many reposted messages are originally from emergency management agencies? So in other words, there's did the messages from emergency response agencies make sense or really have the power, right? That's very important. They got the funding. Uh, they want the, their voice being heard. So does that work? So that's regarding these are four typical questions if we ask separately. If we want to say how, if we combine a thing, 
Then if I also think space and time together, I can say, well, does people's social media activities form impact error form a significant hotspot? Immediately after being struck by a disaster, or space and content, is, do people approximate to the impact area have more on topic messages? Space network is local opinion. Does local opinion lead the matter? So that is called a space network. Or time content is do people change the topics from preparedness to impact? When disaster going on, the at a different stage where the people change the topic when they will change the topic. And we look at the time network. Is uh, where the same set of opinion leader will dominate the uh, network over time. The content network is how do rumor will spread across the social network. And then we can do make things more complicated. If I put a space time network together, then we can ask say whether the same set of local opinion leaders dominate in all stages of the disaster for a given place. So this will become space time network. And a space content network is what's a spatial extent of the spreading of rumor messages in a disaster. How far a rumor go? In, in the space. The time content the network is how long do rumor messages last for spreading? Now, when I talk about rumor, think about this year's presidential election. There's many, many rumors go on in the uh, social media. And even nowadays, when we read the news, sometimes we just wonder whether it's true or false. And why so many people spread that? Is that, and later someone come out and say, hey, it's wrong. But sometimes no one come out to say it's wrong or, or correct, right? So, and if we put space-time content and network together, is what's the space-time content of the diffusion of the rumor message in a disaster? So you can keep asking more when you putting the dimension together. So for me, is I consider it as a dimension fusion. We have something called data fusion, putting data together, overlay data together to see where some new things come out. But my argument is for each data, your social media data, at least you have four dimensions. When you do the dimension fusion, you, you can ask many questions. And this question after the calculation, at least space, time, content, network, we can ask. We can ask. We can ask. Uh, uh, fifteen. Uh, we have fifteen ways of combination. Okay. So this. Okay. So not only that. We need to use uh, uh, social media data for the social media data is only one single data set. It has some issue, though it's a big and a new. We need to kind of, uh, link it with authoritative data. So the two important things we can do is one is uh, do data fusion with the remote sensing data. And of course, uh, the remote sensing itself, the strength is, is accurate by space. But it is very costly. You cannot always use that at any time you want. Social media data is uh, is good by timing, but the quality and the reliability problem is very, very obvious. Unstructured data, and also have digital divide. So these two uh, need to be uh, integrated. We have a recent ground proposal under review for integrating remote sensing and the social media data for detailed land use map generation and the change detection. And let's integrate the social media data with the sensor data. The reason is sensor data can provide the social political uh, background and uh, demographic and social economic features will shape our risk disaster perception. We have little information on the demographic and the socioeconomic 
uh, features from social media. So that's the, how the two data can be integrated. Um, I want to give you some kind of the our uh, one of our uh, published work and some ongoing work discussion in the following uh, slides. We utilize the wildfire hazards as an example. What I argue here is I just use wildfire hazards as a kind of proof of concepts. We can apply it to other natural disaster scenarios. Why we, why I do the kind of the uh, kind of a wildfire disaster is because of when especially more and more urban area growing urban urban area and the people's life kind of the life sometimes especially in Western USA has been heavily impacted by the increasingly frequently wildfires. Hmm? Okay, so there's many efforts. Uh, we did a kind of a lot of literature review to look at how people understand the wildfire. Many of those uh, uh, research is actually look at the environment. See what kind of environments easily causing wildfires and uh, building the relationship between wildfires and the climate and the wildfires or, and uh, the, the risk of wildfires and the growth of urban area. However, due to the, all these research, try not to use the data is not related to human activities because these models are considered, as I said, the user human they related data as aggregate level use uh, the whole urban uh, data or just use the land use data it's interesting but how about we look at the things from a different perspective so some people just can't be able to think about why so firstly why social media data here is also useful some in go, uh, research demonstrates Space and time are strongly related to situational awareness in emergency events. Right, the uh, wildfire is a, a typical example of emergency events. These recent uh, works, no matter from the floods or hurricane Sunday, they find out that people do know what's going on. So then we are thinking about a similar things we will be apply, we can apply to natural hazards such as wildfire okay so uh, uh they are doing earthquake looking earthquake related micro blog messages then find out the improve people's situation at one is then they put it divide them into different categories and then building uh, tweets to find out, building the platform to find out which tweets are really are interesting or relevant, which are not. To be, utilize machine learning to extract inf informative tweet messages and, and further develop artificial intelligence for disaster uh, platform. So all this help us to understand is yes, the space time matters. In addition to that, some other researchers look into the role of, of opinion leaders. Uh, in other words, the trait we have for sure is not uh, equal, or not everyone, not every trait will be responded. So that, that's something we we know, but for many many studies, uh, overlook that because when we get a tweet, so we use tweet as x y coordinates to do the spatial distribution or something. We forgot actually the tweet. Some tweets are ex extremely important because they have been retweeted many times. Some tweet is only a kind of a single isolated tweet. The majority of tweets are not retweeted. So with this case study in, using San Diego, we, we try to find out first how the 
as I said, space-time method, how about we play with the space-time analysis, then look at how opinion leader topics uh, works. <coughs> regarding the uh, data, the, the, there always an interesting thing regarding the data when we do this research. At the beginning, we get it from, we use a file and a wide file as a keywords. Then, we use a wide file and a, a, we look at what, because sometimes when people talk about the file and a wide file, not necessarily related to uh, the, the event we, we are thinking about. As a, even we talk about the file, there's a, some people lost the job, it's also fired. And you may say, well, why the file is really something you want, right? And we find some message saying, I hate this rumor, rumor runs like a wide file. So it's not as a wide file you, are, you, want, you want. So, so to make it more specific, is we need to know. We cannot just blindly use tweets. We need to know what's going on at that time. So we find out there are these files really going on. In, in, in when we do the research. So that's a purpose. We are purposely using that time period to get the tweets because we first will believe if you are talking about a white fire at that time, very much possibly you will talk about these related events. For example, if today is a presidential, presidential election day and you talk about election, you talk about election, I would guess 80% of your meaning is about the presidential election instead of election in your own company. You think, think about the context is what you will talk during that time. Definitely, we, we are also going interesting. We will go to verify during that time when you mention these, these places. Some people use a name for the Bernardo. Even during that time, you're talking about Bernardo, it's very much possible you talk, up, talk about a wide file. And we go to check whether it is. So tweets only have 140 characters. You cannot ask those people to write tweets as writing academic papers. Right? So there's many interesting things we need to pay attention to. OK, so we, we first we can do one thing, the collect the, the tweets regardless they are you talk about a job lost or a uh, rumor run as a wide file. We get all of them use a keywords or file and a wide file because it can help us to look at the tweets at, across all dimensions. And the second phase, I said I need the exactly which uh, wide file they are talking about. Is Bernardo wide file, Coco wide file? Because in what happens in the wide file is when the wide file going on in San Diego, there's different places have wide file. And these wide file will be named differently according to where the wide file uh, runs. So this will help us do spatial analysis. What does spatial analysis here? It does not mean only mean candle density estimation. I want to know whether people have a situational awareness of what's going on surrounding them. So definitely I need to know where the wide file is instead of knowing there is a wide file in San Diego. I want, want to know where it is in San Diego. So you will see my example later. So we, what we do is, we, we, we also need to select a good time window, find out something from uh, May 13 to May 22, because most of the destructive wide file were 100% contained within this time period. So it starts from May 13, and on May 22, it's almost like 10 days. There are quite a few wide files going on in San Diego. So we go to use this time period to do the proof. And we use a radius of 40 miles to, to get, a, get the tweets within so kind of majority of the San Diego County. Uh, as I said, it's a proof of a, a kind of a case proof. If it works, we use the same procedure. We definitely we can apply to the whole United States or many places. And what, what, what we utilize some method which has been well developed, but we put thing together. For example, definitely we will do the kind of estimation. We will do to find out the spatial pattern. 
do text mining to identify topics in the uh, tweets. And we do social network analysis to detect opinion leaders in what file hazards uh, who are, who dominate the information diffusion. Kind of this estimation mainly may use the coordinates of tweets and we get some a lot of formatted map to find out the intensity level, right? So we think it will very much lead to population behind. So we we use a dual candidacy. So in other words, each cell value of tweets divided by each cell value of population to get a, a adjusted map. We also need to do a text mining. For text mining, I use some open source package, uh, TM package in R. We first we clean the raw tweets by remove the URLs and the stop words. So what the stop words means those nonsense uh, words, or not meaningful, uh, not important words need to be removed. Then we get the term document the matrix, and later we do key means clustering methods to group them into clusters. So we, so when we. Uh, to make it uh, uh, implemented, first we need to know the temporal evolution of the wild tweets and compare it with the wild file the temporal evolution. So in other words, what's going on in the virtual space versus what's going on in the real space? We need to see the relevance. The second is we need to see whether the impact areas are clusters of wild file tweets. Why it's important? It helps us to see whether people have situational awareness. So whether are people aware of what's going on? So that's that's something we need to ask. Uh, again, uh, these are what files we are uh, looking to uh, look at the six of the nine what files occurred on May 14. So that prob so explain why May 14 jump. See the May 14. 2014, May 14, 2014, the tweets jump because of the six of the nine wild files occurred on that day. So kind of people are aware of what's going on. And we also look at over time, the temporal uh, concurrent evolution of wild file and its related tweets can be observed. So they are very kind of related. The, we pick up two wild files, one called Bernardo wild file, the other called San Marcos wild file. They, they have their corresponding tweets peak on the day after the breakout time. So in other words, we can find out there's one day time lag because the information spread need to take time. If we look at where these tweets are, Located, we can find that downtown definitely is the largest hotspot in terms of the number of fire or wildfire tweets because the large size of population they are keep generating numerous Twitter activities. That's not surprising. However, we use a field out as a as a influence of population use a dual kind of density. Then this is the Bernardo fire. Look at there's a kind of the something in the here is a is a called ignition location is where the weather will occur then we put it there there you will see right the the like a relatively higher value of downtown now is decreased now now the you will see the cluster move towards the uh, where the fire really broke out we can use look at you can look at a similar thing for uh, 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 this is called another wildfire, but it's beyond the beyond the forty miles. So due to the data limitation at that time, we only collect collected data within forty miles from downtown uh, San Diego. So we didn't go far to the north part of the wildfire there. You see the now the hot spot spot move towards that direction when you consider the influence of population. Okay, if you look at the by topics, why we also need topics? Because the importance of the term in, to in tweets. We pick up top 10 
frequent words. If a term appears frequently in tweets, it's regarded as important. So, right? Let's see again, again. It's important. Then we find out that what's the most important term is evacuate. Because the most urgent thing in wildfire situation is evacuate. So that, that's proved. What's the second one is, is about home. Because, because uh, evacuation of home. Most of the time when you talk about evacuate, actually, you're talking about evacuation of homes. That's, then we can go to do the text text mining to get the clusters. So we find out that there's a seven major clusters. The number one cluster in Chile is talk about the people with thankfulness to firefighter. I think they will like this uh, finding, right? So people are not talk about how how they suffer from the uh, wildfire. They're talking about how thankful they are to firefighters. Okay, so that's uh, actually become number one important message uh, class. Then they talk about the burned homes in uh, Carlsbad. It's a location in San Diego. Interestingly, they are also someone talk about the wind framing the wildfire <laughs> because sometimes wildfire become worse is because of windy. Right, so now as third class emerges, people report is hey. Windy, so we it's very windy. So we there's more there are quite a few issues and problem. Then they also talk about countryman the percentage and impacted, right? For when we look at further, we find out some people do. There's some people even come to report the four south launch. There's a burning wildfire, and on damage report, uh, cost six. The cost seven is about evacuation in Bernardo. So based on the so in other words, there's quite a few disaster uh, wildfire going on. Looking to these cluster, you even will be able to know rank them by the significance, uh, by by the size and the importance. You will find that what have they suffered the most, and what are the reasons they are talking about. So this will give us many interesting things. He definitely will not use this one hundred percent to make a decision because there may be some overwhelmed, overrepresented. Uh, kind of the report, but it at least it helps the emergency response department quickly to look into to see what's going on. So in other words, it helped to we retrieve information from data. But now it's at the hands of emergency response department. They need to use their knowledge to to get more things out from the information, then get back to the society. Okay, so then we have to see the social network. The social network, the, the social network and NSA can also be built, we this time will be built based on the retweet relationship. We go to calculate the in degree and out degree for each node. The interesting thing we find out is more than 85% of nodes say the up, uh, the, the top, uh, the top map. Okay, the top map shows more than 85% of nodes have no users retweet their message. What does that mean? So 85% of the tweets, you can say that they are Mimi. The, the time when they were birth, that's the time when they die, because no one can, 85%. Only 15% 50, of tweets were retweeted. And about 90% of users will retweet only one user or none. So in other words, there are, mm, if we are, like when we do special, like GIS, what do we do? We like to see, see the clusters, spatial cluster, spatial autocorrelation. But actually in the virtual space, there are more clustered than the, what do we see in the space. So that's really interesting. So, so what it means is during the emergency response, I would rather only follow one, one channel to know what's going on. I really put my trust of one person, I follow that person. So, the, so, so in other words, in the emergency response or natural disaster issues, people very much rely on authority or rely on something they truly believe. So that's interesting because some people said, okay, well, what, what does the social media world mean? It means there is no authority. We, everyone, it's like become flat. 
everyone is a uh, kind of the the, the uh, I'm the person you need to come to me or some or everyone like looks like an equal. But uh, interestingly, in this common kind of disaster response, it become highly good, highly hierarchical. Uh, okay, so it's interesting. So if we look at the nodes, then we find that the three major uh, dominating nodes is is being retweeted is uh, 10 news, KPBS news, and NBC San Diego. All three are owned by three local news media in San Diego. And we even we didn't find out the 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 the, the, the sign. I we cannot pay, find out what I mean. At least the the emergency. Then there's no emergency response agency in the top three. They are the uh, news media. Okay. Then if we look at uh, what we can learn from here, first, uh, spatial and temporal patterns of wildfire related tweets identified uh, temporally can color the evolution of wildfire and wildfire related tweet activities. And we, when we do the data mining, text mining of topics can extract useful information. We find out people have strong situational awareness during the emergency events. And the opinion leader play a very important role because the, the local authorities and the traditional media reporters dominant in the retreat network. If we can do some simultaneous analysis of the four dimensions, we might be able to provide a new science. But in that published paper in uh, for the uh, natural hazards, we haven't really put a simultaneous analysis of all the four dimensions. That is space time content and network. So if if I look at the Almighty study, they doesn't have limitation, but all the limitation point to the future work. First, also we search 40 miles of San Diego, and later we find out some places where wildfire occurred were not contained. So in other words, when you, no matter how you search around, there are always being wildfire outside of your boundary. Then if it's outside of your boundary, the people inside might talk about the wildfire outside. The reason is because they are nearby, or Actually, I'm not. I need to travel to the other places across the wildfire impact area. It's very possible. So, so in other words, it really point to the need of we need to build a kind of national wide, a wide worldwide platform which allow us really to model people's uh, feeling. Right. That, that's the first thing we learn. Second thing is we use one percent sampled data because you use Open API. You get that, but the problem is, you cannot argue whether this really will represent the overall wildfire trade activities. You cannot guarantee you didn't because it's very possible. You get only one percent, and there is there's very possible. It's very important that you tweets. You didn't get very important tweets, which will affect your interpretation. Okay, so a third thing is the social media networking. Our research is only based on retweet relationship, while other types can be used in the future study. We are doing this, doing this now, because, for example, I read your message, I didn't retweet. I might type something similar words. It's possible, but I, I really got the hints from you. Then you may ask, how did you know I saw your uh, tweet? That's one way, definitely. Even I do not follow you, I can go to a tweet uh, kind of the uh, website to, to search tweets. That's one possibility. A second thing is, I'm your friends. I have been followers. I'm, I'm your follower. So what you did in your tweeting, I saw that. When I saw that, I not necessarily retweet. I might type something similar. So, so all these become possible. Okay, that third thing, you know, we need us to consider more computation thing. And the fourth thing is, that's very interesting. When we, now I think we only use some face values of social media data, data 
because when we get the x y coordinates we like to see geo we call the geo tag the tweets we like to put it to the map but what makes tweets more important is their information communication so we want to ask is how information diffusion go on what's the components in the diffusion and how it change over time and what's in that okay and to do this, I have some ongoing work, and there's a pub to be published. And we we develop some open source spatial mimi diffusion simulation toolkit, just to simulate to simulate how the information diffused in the. You can consider all these uh, points like uh, represents uh, the mimi. I mean the message. Okay. So can say that all these messages are the we turn it dark like we have a bulb, the lamp. Uh, the, the, then you turn the lights one by one, eventually light the whole San Diego. I just want to ask, can we develop uh, agent-based modeling to simulate the whole procedure, like the how all the lamps, how all the lights in a room or in a building to be turned on one by one? What's the step? That's, okay, so this help us, and this is very useful even for economic geography. Look at how the knowledge spill over uh, spread, how the patterns designed in one place to being adopted in other places. Okay, this is one, and and we also use say we we'll build the agent based modeling to think about the top top in top left. Top left is the map x in the top left i have five maps here looks like like looks like a region right look at it like even like a watershed actually it's not that's what we designed is x represents the percentage of the how opinion leader the message um, the percentage of opinion leaders message how it being retweeted the percentage why represent a common users uh, message being retweeted. Definitely, the opinion leader will easily get retweeted than the common user. So x, you see your x value always larger than y value by pairs. Then we pick up the these pair opinion leader the percentage of being retweeted and the common user uh, percentage being retweeted, and we get many dots. We feed into the real data of the San Diego wildfire data if what we simulated the agent based modeling is close to the reality we give it a green the more green if it's more more inconsistent it will red, be red so interesting thing see as the, the top left map is there's a this one the the top left in the top left here is a, represents is at the day one, when the message spread out, the domain user, the opinion leader dominated the, the spread because this is very well fit and it fall into the the green space. They mean the virtual space and real space overlaps very well. And when it come to day two, it become become messy. And day three is, is almost like chaos chaotic is kind of very messy and then go to day four a day four is almost the one waterfall event they almost to the go to the end then you find out is opinion leader already lose the interest of spreading these things at that time the it's no longer is whether you're opinion leader or not it will be similar as a common user so that's happening in many places when there is an event going on first the domain user opinion leader who know inside information will take advantage advantage of guiding the whole information diffusion and after some days all the common users also know what's going on then they throw in many kind of interesting statements sometimes even better than the opinion leader so they will come to take over the spreading so that's very interesting help us to find out the patterns we can verify it in many many different scenarios to see what kind of topic will make the opinion leader so strong for how many hours or how many days? And then when the turning point comes. So 
this is uh, some very interesting thing we are developing. It's also a paper under review. Okay, so okay, so I think that's all for my uh, talk uh, today. So what I uh, quick summarize is, I f first I come up the idea is why we want to do the social media analytics for natural disaster measurement. It's very much from the idea of how children this idea is. Two ideas. The first is. What's the information diffusion in the in the information diffusion in the spatial context? The second is what are people in regional science? And I change I change I move the change it to another statement saying what are people in human environment interaction, especially emergency response? What are what what are the law of people there? And to do that, and we find our social media data has a four dimensions data. Four dimensions: space, time, content, and network. Uh, and the four, if you put the four dimension together, at least uh, there are fifteen different ways of combining the four dimensions. And then I use a case study of San Diego's case study to to all the methods. Not, not none of that are sophisticated. All of them you can get from different software or open source toolkits. But combine them together, you can tell an interesting story of San Diego wildfire. And beyond that, I point out the limitations of that research. So to accomplish, to move beyond those uh, uh, limitations, I show you uh, two, one, two other additional work. One is do the simulation of seeing how the message is spread out one by one. And the second work is how to model the relationship between opinion leader and common users to to balance seeing the, how the message, uh, how the network is formed. So all of them is a. Uh, uh, we need more additional work to fill in the gaps. I just uh, point out it's maybe you might remember I. There is a table showing all different ways, example questions we can ask when the 15 combinations can be represented. Uh, I, I, the, uh, a very important reason I come to CGA is I know this uh, center has archived tweets data, which are worldwide archived uh, tweets data, and the data is uh, going on. I think if data archived itself, if we want to make most of out of that, first we need to have theory. Second, we need a method, new methodological design. So, what the data I use is due to uh, the, the platform limitation. I cannot get all these data download the worldwide data for myself. I only pick up individual cities to do the uh, theory or method proof. Um, since if it works. I'm more than happy to work with the uh, center here. Since uh, we have done developed many interesting procedures, we can work together to put these things to run in the platform here to make lots of added value from the world fire, worldwide tweets center. Thank you, and uh, any questions? <laughs> I have a question. Back back on the slide that showed the the, the word clusters. What are you doing? Oh, d -d 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 -d. yeah. These um, so cluster one is that? I mean, did that was that the most frequency? Uh, or what? Or those that those order? I mean, does that order have any anything to do with? Okay, I see what I mean. Is when we develop uh, user text mining uh, topic uh, to be more specific, the topic uh, modeling, you get uh, this is each class can see the each dimension. It's the same way how we do principal component analysis for numerical data. 
So then when you have this component, you will rank the the how many like class one get most of tweets by tweet tweets. If you you need to classify by percentage, you which cluster you more likely belong to. So by the number of the tweets who are more like join joining joining which join which uh, uh, class the class one has the most the tweets. Then by the number followed by class two all the way to class seven. So class one has the most number of tweets are in the class one. But as I said, there's something interesting. So, and because most, I mean, if you are people outside of the impact area, I think many people don't know what's really the how how damage it is in the uh, wrong burned area. What I can say is I see lots of thankful thing to uh, the the firefighter. So that, that's that's possible. The reason you will see that. But if we divide by location, by by space, say within the buffer area, or let's say we look at divide divide the, the region differently, you might see the class the ranking will be different. So it will become very interesting is if we have large amounts of data and a lot cover large coverage, then you will then we really will see the pattern and say, hey, people here are dominating topic like this. And the way it, it will vary across space. And how did you pick the 40 mile radius? Oh, it's a, it's a good question because that's a, because we have a clarity, uh, uh, due to our NSF ground requirement, we need to do some analysis of compare U.S. top 30 cities on some public policy or emergency response comparison. Uh, we, we, at that time, we do not have a plan to cover the whole United States. So for each large city, use the downtown, we do a radius of about 40 miles. So that's, that's arbitrarily. Uh, yeah. very, it's, so I think that maybe the best idea is to cover, not to cover the whole United States, even cover the whole world. So, so that's a more, so we do some kind of proof uh, study and uh, hopefully if it works, well, many of that works, but then we find out the limitation is cutting into an area which has an impact far beyond that. Uh, it certainly is the case that many people including me, have tried to treat particularly Twitter but other types of social media mm -hmm. essentially as a different kind of observation. So you have remote sensing, mm -hmm. you know, image sensing, you have social media sensing. And mm -hmm. The problem is often, you know, what is being observed uh, by those Comment. So I'm sort of interested in whether the comparison to a source of information about what actually happened is more valuable or analysis of the, the pattern of uh, things like tweets uh, is more valuable in determining what, what the actual observation of reality is. Yeah, it's a great topic. Uh, I, I have a one of my PhD students just defended her um, uh, uh, candidation proposal. Her topic is about the fracking activities in the United States. And we raised that question for her because she found out there's many big names came in. Don't, they say, we don't like fracking activities at all. We want to protect the environment. And you will see a dominating uh, if you want to find out the opinion leader, most of the opinion leader do not like fracking. And only then it comes, it's very bad. It's only the, all those kind of companies who come in for fracking or labeled as a special interest group or anyway, become very negative thing there. And they, but actually, actually, if you read, read into this, you will find out that people try to be practically correct. When you see if you will look much better, I protect the environment than I promote the economic development. Though some of them even uh, secretly invest in the fracking industry, but uh, in the front they still say I don't I need 
we need to protect the environment. So you will see some people do something inconsistent, especially on the policy debates, because they try to make them look better. Uh, uh, this kind of inconsistency is before we think it's annoying. But later we find out it's interesting to some extent. Well, I ask my student, you need to really need to go to read these kind of uh, uh, communication theory or even looking some political science to see how well, what's what's the way why people feel to express their opinions in the public if they like A but they try to say I, actually I, I like B. What, what this is and also then definitely we find an interesting things so though why something by percentage it looks the like majority of people don't like fracking why why when later the, the whole state still go for fracking is look at the percentage change Perc i i know in some uh i, I watch news for some countries uh, kind of election in i i, I noticed that one interesting thing statement from them is so there's two, for example, main parties run for uh, election. The argument is one, uh, the ruling, if you at that time, you are the party in power, you need to be at least 10% higher in the poll uh, for, the, for the election. Otherwise, you lose the election. Because many people, when you are in power, they fear to express their opinion. They don't like to say that. So if you are not at least 10% higher in the people's opinion survey, then very much you will lose the election to the, uh, I mean, the, the party which are not in power. So you will see, but, but then when you see a dangerous thing coming, you will see the your support rate is still flat there. And then your the opposite party is going, on, going up, but it's still below you. They are going up, so this kind of is a very to to the party in power is a very a, a dangerous signal. So that one has been used a lot for those people test in the political science, but now you see a similar thing in uh, in the uh, social media. So that's the way I divide my PhD student into two group based on their interest. For those students, say, say Dr. Yeah, I am not very good in reading the literature of the social science or political science, but I'm good at method design. Say, okay, for those students go to do natural disaster, because in natural disaster, people are more honest, is not so politically correct to go to do, uh, the, so, let's say, natural disaster. But for those students who really like to see people, how people behave, or it is more like how you behave in speech to make you look better than go to look at the policy debates. Really, the social media can be used in two things, the emergency response or long-term uh, policy debates. So I also have some students work on the last time the death, death penalty because Nebraska at, at that time changed the policy on the death penalty. And they immediately and initially, lots of discussions in the United States. Also, at the same time, the president in the former president in Egypt was sentenced to death. So, so all these things uh, came together as a big kind of discussion, and it can be compared to where you are, which state you are from. Because in U.S., some states is a, or there's no death penalty. In some states, they have death penalty. Then you will, interestingly, you will see how these states, which have this kind of background, how they will argue, they go for or against the Nebraska change the death penalty policy. But later, I forgot, well, I haven't never really paid too much attention because later they regret it, they want to do it again. I think at the end of last year, but I don't know what happened later. But, but at the beginning, they changed their policy. It sounds like we're still quite a ways away from looking at some body of tweets and uh -huh. and being able to interpret what actually happened. Yes, I think nowadays many of our research is still at the face value, looking at the distribution of the tweet and look at the spatial distribution of tweets. But the tweet itself, we 
treat tweet as another xy coordinate data. But actually, tweet is far beyond that. First, if we treat it as xy coordinate, it itself has some problem. First, we all of us know tweet, you get xy coordinates, is only really very approximate. So easily, your signal will, will shift over several hundred meters. Why you believe it's there? And secondly, is all the, the tweets have, are very unequal. Like I just said, and though each tweet represents people's message, some messages is like a, is come in and uh, die on the at the same time, no one will pay attention to. And some of that is very powerful, can be retweeted, retweeted many, many times. Any more questions? Okay, thanks again. Uh, thank you. And we can be further discuss after this. Yeah, stop this recording.